Hello everyone and welcome to another Let's Play of A Little Lily Princess by Hanako Games. My name is Anna Mardal and um, this is my third Let's Play of this game. So if you landed on this one you probably want to go back and watch the other two because we're just going to jump right in. When we last left we were on week nine and we need patience and belief which I think comes from the same yeah we're just gonna write in our diary all week our aspiring writing career here um, got some knowledge and art which we didn't need got there's that uh, belief in, and, and and sympathy there's our patience there's some more patience give me some belief give me some belief okay we got a little bit of belief Okay, look at us. We're doing awesome. Um, so I, I think I'm so afraid that today's is going to be a sad one. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm guessing. Sarah was resting in her room with a book when there came a quiet knock on the door. Sarah, Mama? Oh, Lottie. What is it, Lottie? Have you come for tea? Mariette has promised us a special treat. Apricot sandwiches. Oh, yes. No. No? Wow. I do not know if you guys can hear that. I actually hope the microphone isn't picking it up, but I just got the most amazing blast of thunder in the background. There's a storm going on where I am. Sarah, Mama, you like school, don't you? I don't know. It wasn't something she had previously spent a great deal of time deciding. After all, whether I like it or not, I am here now. I don't think I could say that I don't like it. Everyone is kind to me and my rooms are pleasant. No, I meant school, with books and numbers and remembering things. Oh, yes, I like books very much. Could you help me with my lessons? because it's hard to pay attention, and then Miss Minchin scolds me. I don't like it when she says my name like that, Miss Lee. I don't like it. But you make everything interesting. Of course I'll help you with your schoolwork, but you still have to learn it. All right. So now we have to pick our weekly event. Um, we've done a couple of Jesse events. We've done a couple of Lavinia events. Um, oh, I'm torn because I want to talk to Mariette, but I also feel like we should check on Ermengarde. So let's go check on Ermengarde. Have we done a couple of Ermengarde events? I think we only did one. Let's go check on Ermengarde. This time, it was Sarah who was curled up near a window when Ermengarde found her. Sarah? I wanted to ask you something, if you're not busy. Sarah raised her head and smiled. Only Ermengarde would realize that I might be busy when I am sitting and thinking. You can always ask me things. She paused, then added, I can't always answer, though. I might not know. Well, is it true that Miss Minchin has you to tea with visitors just so you can speak French for them? Oh, well, I don't know if that is the only reason. I often do not say very much, and she still keeps me there for the rest of it. Some of her visitors are not very interested in French at all. Some of them prefer poetry or want to tell me how they s themselves saw India once upon a time. But sometimes, yes, Miss Minchin has guests who speak French and wish me to converse with them. You really can speak it then. Not just a few words or a sentence you memorize. Ermengarde's respectful tone made Sarah feel a bit off balance. She tucked up her feet, sat with her hands clasped round her knees. I can speak it because I have heard it all my life. You could speak it too if you had always heard it. Oh no, I couldn't. I could never speak it. Why not? Ermengarde shook her head so that the pigtails wobbled. You have heard me before. I'm always like that. I just can't say the words. They're so queer. 
I dare say that little French girls think the same things about English if they try to learn the language for the first time. But if you had heard it as a child... But I did. My father, he speaks seven languages, or maybe eight. I forget. I forget everything. I always have. My father never forgets. He has libraries with thousands of volumes in them, and he knows every one of them by heart. He says that when I was very young, he used to speak to me in different languages every day, because he hoped that I would learn them all, but it only made me cry. Oh my gosh, poor Ermengarde. Okay, so first and foremost, I really do wonder if she has a, a learning disability or learns differently from a lot of people. But second of all, that would be super overwhelming for, for a lot of people. Like, you're just trying to get a handle on one language and he's throwing eight at you randomly? Oh my gosh, I would struggle. I, I feel her pain. I have a hard time with languages. My nurse made him stop because she was afraid he would confuse me so much I would give up on talking altogether. I heard it from her that he says I am a severe trial because he is so very clever and I am notably and unmistakably dull. I am the monumental dunce of this school. I can't speak French. I can't recite poems without flubbing the words. My handwriting is too big and lumpy. I can't calculate quickly. I can't keep my king straight. I'm not good at anything. Oh. But you are. You are clever, aren't you, Sarah? The question was asked with a touch of awe in her voice. It made Sarah feel slightly odd to be the subject of such open admiration. Sarah looked out of the window into the dingy square where the sparrows were hopping and twittering on the wet iron railings and the sooty branches of the trees and reflected a few moments. People have often said that I am clever, but am I? And if I am, then how did I come to be that way? I don't know. I can't tell. I think that you are. I think you're wonderful. Ermengarde did not know why a lump came into her throat, and her eyes felt as if tears were in them. Lavinia and Jessie are best friends. I wish we could be best friends. Oh. You're clever, and I'm the stupidest child in the school, but I, oh, I do so like you. I'm glad of that. It makes you thankful when you are liked. She stood up from the window and took Ermengarde's hands in hers. Yes, we will be friends, the very best of friends. And I'll tell you what else. A sudden gleam lit her face. I can help you with your French lessons. You can try. My heart hurts. Girls, gather round if you please. As the weather is particularly pleasant today, we will be taking carriages to the park for extended riding lessons. Please dress accordingly. Oh, thank goodness, it's been too long. I have never greatly cared for horses. It is fashionable, and a lady should at least know the basics, but it is simply not comfortable. Do you ride, Sarah? I would not truly say that I ride, but I have met horses and been in the saddle once or twice. Well, I'm sure you'll learn. You learn everything, after all. I do try. I like riding. I wish we could go further than the park, though. It is more pleasant to be on the horseback in the countryside. Oh, I agree. It is much lovelier. Imagine being on horseback, galloping across the wild moors, long hair streaming behind you like a warrior queen of old, riding astride like some hoyden, even... <laughs> oh god, I don't remember how to pronounce the name. I know who she is. Even... Is it Bodicea? I'm going to look it up, because I found out last time I can Google without it interrupting the video. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't make it. Boudica? We're going to go with Boudica. Riding astride like some hoyden? Even Boudica rode in a chariot. I think I should like a chariot. Just then, their discussions were interrupted by the sound of a wailing child. Miss Minchin was attempting to bring little Lottie together with the older girls, much to her displeasure. 
I won't go. I won't. I won't. What a ridiculous noise you are making. Stop that at once. Shan't. You are more than old enough to begin learning. Every student at the school is expected to. I hate horses. I won't. I won't. <laughs> Flinching and covering their ears with their hair, the other girls slipped away to change into riding dress. Only Sarah remained. If you don't behave, you shall be whipped, just as a horse would be. No! To Sarah's surprise, Lottie suddenly broke free of Miss Minchin and rushed to Sarah, cowering behind her and pressing her wet face into the fabric of Sarah's dress. Is this more than just a tantrum? Miss Minchin, please, could you let me talk to her alone? Dear Sarah, you are very kind, but we simply do not have time for these shenanigans. If you can make her mind swiftly, then do so, but it must be done. Shaking her head, she walked away. Lottie wiped her grubby hands across her face. Her shrieks had quieted, but her eyes were still little fountains. Lottie, are you afraid of horses? Yes. Well then, no wonder that you are upset. This cheerful justification startled Lottie enough to leave her frozen amid sniffle, mouth hanging open. Sarah nodded and continued. It is normal to be upset about things that frighten you. Only, I think it is also normal to try and make yourself less frightened if you can. You wouldn't want to be afraid forever. Horses are very large, but they can also be kind and sweet. They like apples and carrots and being petted just like cats do. Lottie now seemed more confused than distraught. Perhaps you should just go and meet the horses. Then you can come back and play with Tybalt. Wh what if Lavinia won't let me? Then we shall wait until she is not looking. And while we wait, I will tell you about the horse who rescued a lost prince. She held out her hand, and after a moment, Lottie took it. Oh. A new weekday activity is now available. Sarah can use her free time to help the younger students with their schoolwork by choosing the tutoring, <laughs> the tutoring option. <laughs> tutoring tutorial. Tutor? Tutorial? I don't know. English is a fun language. Um, what does it do? It gives knowledge and pa Hey, hey, patience! We need patience! Although it's... It's interesting, it actually doesn't give anything. It's a gain equal to, gain equal to, gain equal to. So it's like an end of the week modifier more than anything. Um, oh, well actually the bottom one is a gain. Um, we do need patience. Um, we also still need grace and belief. This has got a belief possibility. Um, grace is most likely to be gotten from dance. Oh, and dance can also give patience. And let's do some tutoring and see how it comes out. I feel like I'm doing these really wrong, but... Okay, so we got some belief. We, we didn't get anything because it was a double all vigor and we had no vigor to double. We didn't get any... Wow, we're doing not so good. Okay, that was... That was not one of my best goes. That's alright, it's alright. When Sarah came down the stairs, she found Jessie holding a most curious item. It resembled a long wooden spoon, though somewhat thicker in the shaft with a solid round end instead of a bowl. <laughs> okay, we're not going to guess what this is. What, what are you doing with that? Jessie turned the object over in her hands. Oh, Sarah, isn't it interesting? It's from India. I know. I've heard there are societies for gentlemen and ladies, separate of course, where they all have wooden clubs like these and swing them to strengthen their arms or even throw them at each other. Isn't that quaint? Are you sure they throw them at each other? In India, the jugglers throw them up into the air and catch them again. Oh, I don't know. 
She looked at the solid wooden shape she held, then up at Miss Minchin's painted ceiling. Perhaps I ought not to try that. Where did you get it from? Lavinia gave it to me. For a moment, she cradled the club in her arms as if it were a doll. She wouldn't tell me anything about it, though. She told me to take it if I was so interested, and she would say nothing more. Jessie let the length dangle down from her hand and swung it gently back and forth. It doesn't seem like such hard work. Her eyes glinted for a moment with strange emotion. Imagine the blow if you struck a man with this. Oh, Jessie, you are my favorite. What? Why? Oh, it was a foolish thought, nothing more. I was thinking of chariots and queens. We are not soldiers and have no need to defend ourselves. There are brave men for that job. Like my papa. Yes, you are lucky to have such a father. Sarah smiled, pleased to accept any compliments for her beloved papa and thought no more of it. Jesse, has someone hurt you? I really want to go see Jessie, but we're going to see Marriott because I've been putting off Marriott for a while. And I noticed that there's a no event, so you could theoretically play through without any events at all and just see what ending you got, which I'm sure would be dreadful. Come and see! Come and see! Ah, mademoiselle, you do not need to tug at me. It is a promise. I will follow. Her hand still in Sarah's, Marriott stepped into the classroom. I'm very sorry. I was too excited. That is quite all right, then. Now what is it that you wish to show me? Well, as it happens, it is more what I wished for you to show me. Miss Minchin keeps a globe in the schoolroom. I was hoping that you could show me where in France you were born. Ah, uh -huh. if it please you, mademoiselle. I do not think it will make much impact for you, though. The distance between one city and another, compared to the world, it is not so much. Dutifully, she turned the globe to bring France into view. Somewhere near here, I believe, would be the... I'm just going to have to look it up because we keep encountering this word. Uh, Limoges? Limoges? That's what it looks like Wikipedia is saying, but I'm really bad at reading pronunciation marks. The Limoges. Moosh, moosh, the limoosh. Someone will tell me in the comments. <laughs> Somewhere near here, I believe, would be limoosh. Sarah followed Marriott's finger, then smiled to herself. You were right. It does not tell me anything more than I already knew. Could you show me where you lived? In India? Hmm. Here, I think. Or somewhere nearby. It's hard to be sure. But this, this is where the ship took us. Sarah tilted her head and considered Marriott curiously. You are very different from an Indian servant. My ayah was always kind to me. She would never tell me if I were doing something wrong or making a mistake. Even if I asked for her opinion, she would always say that I was right. It was very confusing sometimes until I learned to ask my papa when I needed to know something. Your papa wrote of you that you were a clever and curious child who was eager to learn and who would appreciate having the reasons explained to you. Yes, that is just so. I, I, I'm hoping, well, we'll finish out the scene. It was another sign of how much her papa had considered her needs and well-being and it made Sarah feel warm to think it. Every time Mariette speaks to me, it is a gift from my papa. I do miss my Aya sometimes and the other servants from our home. They were always a part of my life, even the ones that worked directly for my papa and did not speak to me. They were familiar. I wish that I could see them again. All of my life, I suppose my life hasn't really been that long, has it? But for all my life, I always knew that I would have to go away like other children did. The climate of India is very bad for British children, so we must return to England and go to school. That is what everyone says. I wonder, is the climate of England very bad for Indian children also? Perhaps that is why none of them traveled with us here. Perhaps that is so. If, as you say, the climate is very different, 
then it could be very difficult to adjust. However, mademoiselle, it is also very possible that they do not wish to travel so far from the homes and families that they love. Oh, yes. I didn't think of that. I would not wish to leave either. If I had the choice, I would rather be at home with my papa. It is very difficult to leave behind all that you have known and travel to a foreign land. But this was a foreign land to you. Wasn't it difficult to leave your family and your home in France? Marriott's smile was enigmatic. Who can say? Perhaps it is for the best in the best of all possible worlds. So, okay. I wish that... I'm always sad for the paths not taken in a game. And I wish that... There was two uh, two points there that we kind of blew past that we could have talked about. And one was um, when she was saying that her Aya didn't feel safe correcting her, but Marriott does. It would have been nice for someone to point out <laughs> that at this stage, the English uh, uh, interactions with their, their Indian servants was very different from interaction with... French servants and I can fully understand why an Indian woman would not feel safe correcting or gainsaying her, her, her English employer's daughter um, and that could have been a good chance to bring that up and, and kind of highlight that. Second of all, um, when they talked about kids going back to England to learn, I'm not at all an expert on the, the history here, but I really think that a big reason for that was to, um, was because of English, um, separatism and even outright xenophobia that they didn't want their English kids becoming acclimatized to Indian ways. So the, the act of sending them back to school was an act of keeping them separately uh, white and English as opposed to assimilating into this other non-white culture. Um, and as for why the Indian kids weren't sent to England, um, well, A, many of them probably didn't want to and, 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 and might not even even necessarily have been given a better education. I mean, you can already see our education with Miss Minchin is actually really awful, um, and she's she's a terrible teacher. Um, but but also that they would have been discriminated against in London. Um, and you know, I, I really wish that Marriott could have found a way to introduce that. I, obviously, I don't want the game to go all you know. But it, still, there's history here, and it's really fascinating, important history. And I hate for it to just be glossed over when a lot of that history informs how Indian people are treated in England even now and vice versa like like this isn't all just way in the past anyway I just I'm sad that that wasn't discussed a little bit more um I don't know where I was going on that I just sort of it flittered through my head um <laughs> come for the reading stay for random thoughts <laughs> Once again, Miss Minchin, who is a terrible teacher, prepared to lead her students back from church to the safe confines of the seminary. However, it so happened that on this Sunday, she caught sight of someone with whom she had business to conduct. Keep together now, girls. Form a line and wait here. Lavinia, dear, I am counting on you to maintain order. I will be only a few minutes. Yes, Miss Minchin. As Miss Minchin walked away, Lavinia raised her chin with pride. She did not notice the conversations going on around her. Look, Sarah Mama, why is that tower so high? That is where they keep the church bells. They lift them high up so that they can be heard from far away. There is a man who lives up there, the tower keeper. It is his job to watch over the bells and keep them clean and ready to ring. He lives there? He never comes down? Sarah did not know how the tower keeper spent his days but she had heard of wise men in India who kept vigils and of Christian stylites who lived atop pillars. No, never. The priests bring them food and water so that he never has to look down. He tends the bells and he thinks about God. Because he's so high up in the sky, sometimes if he is very lucky, the clouds part and he can almost catch a glimpse of the land beyond. 
the shining city and the fields of lilies? At this point, Lavinia noticed the two of them standing with their necks craned back. Sarah Crew, what are you doing? You are gawking like foreigners. Sarah and Lottie lowered their heads, though not, in Lottie's case, without protest. We are looking up at heaven where our mamas are. They live in a city with golden streets and fields of lilies that everyone gathers. And they watch over us and whisper to us, and they visit the man in the bell tower. Sarah told me. You wicked thing! Making up fairy stories about heaven? There are much more splendid stories in Revelation. How do you know mine are fairy stories? You... you're lying. You didn't get that story from the Bible. Read it for yourself. Streets of gold and gates of pearl, and many more things besides. Perhaps the lilies are my own invention, and perhaps they aren't. But I can tell you, you will never find out whether they are or not if you're not kinder to people than you are now. What? But Sarah, perhaps feeling a bit ashamed of her burst of unheavenly temper, turned her head and refused to respond. Oh dear. Uh, we need grace and patience. Or sorry, we need grace and patience and belief. So we're gonna have some, no, we'll do the dance last because the double figure is, um, I feel like I'm doing this wrong. Okay, we're doing diary for the belief and patience options. We're doing dance for the patience and grace, and hopefully we don't land on double vigor. And we'll do t tutorial and attempt to, to get more patience at the end. Go. And we're on week 11. I don't know how long this game is, y'all. We're getting patience. We got some grace. We're doing good this week. I think we got everything I wanted. So we got one bigger, five patients, and three grace. We didn't get very much belief, but I think we have enough to get through the week. Sarah had been out in the town buying a new book, and as she rode in the comfortable carriage back to Miss Minchin's school, her mind was filling up with stories and histories. Quite unconsciously, she descended the carriage steps with the grace of a queen, looking much grander than she might have imagined if she were the sort of girl to think in great detail about how she looked. As Sarah crossed the pavement, she caught sight of a dingy little figure down on the servant's area steps. A girl with a soot smudged face peering up at her with wide eyes. Becky! Something in the eagerness and timidity of that smudgy face made Sarah look back, and when she looked, she smiled, because it was her way to smile at people. The eyes went even wider, as if afraid that she ought not to have been caught looking at a pupil of importance. The maid, if that was what she was, turned and scurried back into the kitchen, vanishing as quickly as a reverse jack-in-the-box. Poor little forlorn thing, I wonder who she is. So she's still not available, so I'm going to go talk to Lavinia, because I feel bad for threatening her with hell. Don't do that, it's not cool. Sarah, might I come in? Of course! Lavinia walked through the door to Sarah's rooms, her hands primly clutching a notebook as an older woman might carry a handbag. I wish to speak with you on the subject of Monsieur Defard, the French master. You did not correct him when he said that you were French. Sarah blinked, not expecting questions in this direction. It seemed a very small thing to bring up again so suddenly. She tried to remember what had actually been said. I believe he meant it as a compliment. It would have been impolite to protest. Besides, I am every bit as much French as I am English. My mother was French. Lavinia cut her off at once. You are not your mother. That is, I am not saying anything against your mother, of course. But whether she was a grand Paris lady or common merchant's daughter, that should not matter. 
She is not you. You are an English girl, being given an English education. There is no need for you to be marked as anything less. Marked? I don't feel marked, and I don't think that being French is anything less than being English. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cough, hold on a second. <coughs> so someone said in the comments, I, I'm glancing at the comments on my other screen. It was Laser Tech Studios. Hi! I had said that they're willing to bet that Lavinia had an Indian mother. So that is starting to look like a pretty strong bet. So, hence a lot of her um, insecurities about Sierra's being English enough or not. We are in England. Gentlemen wish good English girls. Anything other is, by definition, less. I don't think that's true, but I do think Lavinia believes it, or else that she thinks society believes it. It would be different if you were for nobility, though even that would be suspect in some circles. To succeed in society, you must be English to the core. Lavinia took a seat upon one of Sarah's comfortable chairs and looked around the little room with all its imported treasures. Right now, because you, are ex because you are young and not expected to know the language so well, it makes you a novelty, a charming ornament like your tiger skin rug. A well-bred English lady should speak at least a little French to show that she is cultured, but not to be French herself. All of a sudden, Lavinia gave a wicked smile, relaxing her perfect posture. Did you know Miss Minchin can't speak French at all? Not even a little bit. What? Oh yes, I dare say she's just as hopeless as our Ermengarde, although she's desperate to hide it. What a flaw for the proprietor of a school for polishing young ladies. How do you know? My French is not anywhere near as good as yours, but I can put a few sentences together. I have said certain things in her hearing, and she has shown no reaction. Lavinia insulted Miss Minchin in French? No, surely she wouldn't dare, not when she's so concerned with being proper. You should have seen her face when you began speaking so fluently to Monsieur Dufar. Miss Minchin started in her chair as if she had been jabbed with pins. I did not mean to jab her with pins. She'll never admit that she resents you, of course. That would be far too ill-bred. I did not wish for her to resent me. I did not wish to make an enemy of anyone. You can't be friends with everyone, Sarah, especially not with those who are beneath you. They will always resent you for what you have, and they do not. Miss Minchin will always praise us in our endeavors, because we are young ladies from good families and she benefits from our wealth. It doesn't mean that she cares for us. I, I think that is a very lonely way of seeing the world. Lavinia shook her head slowly, with a smile that was decidedly smug about her greater experience of society. That is how things are. She leaned forward in her seat, lowering her voice. You should be careful with Monsieur Dufar as well. He seems very fond of you. But if an unrelated man takes too much of an interest in a young girl, it might look inappropriate. Do not be alone with him. You should always have a chaperone to protect your virtue. Satisfied, she returned to an upright posture. You understand why I'm telling you all these things, don't you, Sarah? I am your role model, and you are my responsibility. I want to help you be happy and successful in your life as an Englishwoman. We are two of a kind, you and I. Once you have settled in, I think we will be very good friends. Sarah smiled, but her heart was not in it. I do not wish to be a successful Englishwoman. I wish to return home to my papa. Even when Lavinia is trying to be friendly, I am not certain that I like her. <laughs> Which is unfortunate because I actually like her a lot just from that interaction alone. I... A friend of mine did point out to me in, in private that, that Monsieur Dufar's um, 
overtures to Sierra about it being a, a beautiful tongue, the French language, um, could kind of be read as maybe a little bit of an appropriate flirting. I thought it was innocent, but you know, it's uh, so I, I appreciate that um, Lavinia is looking out for us because it, it's it's good to have somebody look out for you. Um, I hope she doesn't turn on us when we turn poor. <laughs> Because <laughs> that was actually a really kind thing to do, and also to warn us that Miss Minchin hates us, which I knew, but Sarah didn't. Um, but at the same time, I understand Sarah's uh, disappointment. It's it's never good to hear things like this. That's always sad. So, so that was a lot of emotions. The weather was warm and fine. The skies of London unusually clear. As such. Miss Minchin had decided that the proper Sunday outing for her girls was a long walk, <laughs> was a long walk through parks and gardens. Keep up, keep together. A lady's health is also an important accomplishment. <laughs> oh, look at the picture! <laughs> <laughs> so we have Jessie and Lavinia struggling under their parasols. Ermengarde looks mostly fine. Sarah looks fine. Lottie looks unhappy. <laughs> While the temperature outside was not so great in itself, the ceaseless beating of sunlight upon little heads slowly made their Sunday dresses a difficult burden to bear. This is abominable. My complexion will be ruined. I may have to write to my father and complain. She adjusted the position of the parasol on her shoulder and sighed. No proper lady should be forced to drudge about on foot like this. Is that not why we have horses? Miss Minchin said that the horses should have a day of rest on Sundays. As if a horse would know or care what day it is. I deserve a carriage. It is the due of my rank. Lavinia was not the only girl complaining about the walk. Sarah, Mama, I'm tired. Everyone is tired. Sarah, Mama, won't you carry me? You have to walk for yourself. You're too big for me to carry for long. Besides, it would be undignified. Our Sarah may be many things, but she is not a horse. Perhaps you should ask Armengard. Lavinia, what did I say? I was only pointing out that she seems to be handling this walk better than Lottie is. Sarah looked at her friend. True enough, though Ermengarde's cheeks were as flushed as anyone else, she appeared to be walking steadily along without slowing or complaining. Aren't you tired and hot? Yes. I always feel tired and hot when we walk back from church, so I'm used to it. But this walk is so much longer. It all seems the same to me. Ermengarde has great endurance. It is a virtue. A soldier must have great endurance and be able to carry on through much more difficult circumstances than this. A soldier might have to walk miles in the sun in uniform and carry a heavy pack besides and be ready to fight when he arrives. Our lives are so much easier, but we must be good soldiers as best we can. If Ermengarde can bear it, then I can bear it. If Jesse can bear it, then I shall have to bear it. What's that supposed to mean? What did you mean? Nothing. <laughs> I don't want to bear it. I just want someone to carry me. You have legs. Use them, the same as we are. I don't want to. No one is going to carry you, so if you don't walk, you'll be left here all alone. And then it will get dark, and the tigers will come out and eat you up. Ah! There aren't any tigers in London. You oughtn't make up things like that. Well, she likes it when Sarah makes things up. Sarah spoke quickly to head off the threat of Lottie deciding to cry and fuss. We will all have tea later in my rooms, and I will tell you stories. But first, we must return to the school, which means we must walk. Lottie sighed and carried on. <laughs> I love them all. Except Miss Minchin. Um... So really, all we're lacking is patience and belief, which brings us to diary writing again.
and tea partying. And that's about it. Off we go. So there's some belief. There's some patience. There's some, uh, uh, why did I think I needed sympathy? I don't know why I thought that. I think I, for a second, thought heart was patience. I'm, I'm weird. <laughs> oh, what week is this? This is week 12. Okay. This is a long game. The greatest power Sarah possessed was her power of telling stories and of making everything she talked about seem like a story, whether it was one or not. It was that power which Lavinia and certain other girls were most envious of and at the same time most fascinated by in spite of themselves. Okay, no, I'm calling shenanigans. Lavinia is clearly not envious of her ability to spin stories. Lavinia is envious of the parts of her which are English even despite her best efforts to be French and Indian. So I don't I don't I don't think that's right at all. I I don't buy that. Um but we move on anyway. And it was in service of that power that so many of Miss Minchin's students had gathered in Sarah's jewel box rooms, seating themselves on chairs or cushions or rugs to listen. The princess sat on the white rocks beside the lagoon with a shining white lily in her hands. And as she turned this way and that, she watched its reflection dance across the water below. The waters of the lagoon lay still, crystal clear and green as glass, but the princess could only see her flower in the reflection and never see it herself. So she looked and looked until at last she saw a face in the waters, not her face, but the face of a merman. Sarah went on to tell of the courtship between the princess and the merman prince and the girls who listened sighed sweetly and leaned their cheeks against their hands or each other. As they listened, the door to the room swung silently open, and that same dirty figure Sarah had glimpsed before crept into the room, carrying a heavy coal box. The maid was cleaner than she had been on that other day, but she seemed just as frightened. She hunched by the fire, afraid even to look at the other children or appear to be listening. She put on pieces of coal cautiously with her fingers so that she might make no disturbing noise, and she swept around the fire irons very softly. But Sarah saw that she was doing her work slowly in the hope of catching a word here and there, and realizing this, she raised her voice and spoke more clearly. The princess took her seat in the great clear bubble carriage, and a team of six seahorses pulled her into the ocean their harnesses woven with pearls. Down into the sea they dove. At first the water grew dark, and the princess was afraid. But then, far below, fluttering and rippling through the depths, there shone a light. The small drudge before the grate swept the hearth once, and then swept it again, and finally forgot to play at sweeping at all. The brush hung idly from her fingers as Sarah described winding grottoes beneath the sea, paved with silver sand and lit by glowing sea stars. It was the chorus of mermaids singing that proved her undoing. The forgotten brush slipped from her fingers to clatter against the hearth and drew Lavinia's attention. What? That girl has been listening! The culprit snatched up her brush and scrambled to her feet. She grabbed the coal box and simply scuttled out of the room like a frightened insect fleeing for cover. I knew she was listening. Why shouldn't she? She isn't one of us, Sarah. It isn't proper to talk with servants. Unless they are upper servants, like your Mariette. That's all right. I wasn't talking with her. I was telling a story. I do not know whether your papa would like you to tell stories to servant girls, but I know my papa wouldn't like me to do it. My papa? I don't believe he would mind in the least. He knows that stories belong to everybody. Nothing belongs to everybody. If it did, they'd all have to fight over it. Only loyal Ermengarde took Sarah's side. I think Sarah should tell stories to whomever she wants to tell them. You 
You wouldn't think it was wrong if she told stories to Tybalt, would you? I should think it rather odd if she were telling stories to a cat. Oh, please, Sarah and Mama, finish the story. Sarah looked at the room, full of eager, upturned faces. No one wished to follow and harass the fleeing maid, but no one wished to go and invite her back again either. She would continue her fairy story. She would not forget. Oh, we still don't have an event. Okay. Who should we go talk to? I've been kind of neglecting Lottie, but that's partly because, personally, I don't find Lottie very interesting. She's a sweet girl. I love her. But I just, I don't think that that's going to be much interest. But hey, I could be wrong. Let's go play Lottie. Prove me wrong, Lottie. Sarah's room was a bright little jewel in the sometimes drab nest that was Miss Minchin's select seminary. It remained a bright jewel even when Sarah was not inside it, which could be seen now by the small figure that crept in through the open door. Hmm. Lottie closed the door behind her, then climbed up onto Sarah's bed. She placed her legs just a little bit apart and carefully patted down her skirt to ensure that the petticoats were shown exactly as much and as little as intended. I'm a dolly! Then she laid her arms at her side, tilted back her head, and waited. A minute later, Sarah and her maid Mariette entered the room. A flower that looks the same upside down as it does right side up, but I can't think of... Her voice paused briefly as she came into the room, and Lottie knew she must have noticed. Quickly, she closed her eyes. She would never be able to keep a straight face if she looked at Sarah. After that moment, Sarah continued, My goodness, Emily must have been very busy today. I think she was in such a hurry to get back to her seat when we came in that she didn't quite reach the same position. I see, mademoiselle. Will you tell us what you've been up to, Emily? No? You are very good at keeping secrets. I think we ought to change her clothes and get her ready for bed. She must be very tired. Do not forget the new doll. Lottie fought to giggle, imagining Sarah picking her up next and changing her clothes like a doll. But she had to keep her eyes shut or she would spoil the joke. Oh, I'm sure she'll be fine. Dolls know how to sit still for very long periods of time. A doll in a shop window where everyone can see her, must stand for hours and hours without even blinking. I would not like to try it, standing so long. Here, take Emily's shoes and put them away safely. It would be terrible if she lost them. She needs to be able to run quickly. Yes, mademoiselle. Lottie began to realize that no one intended to pay any attention to her. Sarah and Mariette continued to fuss over Emily, adjusting her nightgown and her pillows. The new doll was utterly neglected. Lottie couldn't help herself any longer. She whined. What was that? Oh, Lottie, when did you come in? I thought you were a doll. I don't want to be a doll. Being a doll is boring. Well, I think it's interesting enough for a doll to be a doll, but it's not so much fun for a girl to be one. Don't you think, Mariette? As you say, mademoiselle. Hmm. <laughs> See, okay, that wasn't actually very interesting. <laughs> to me. Looking at the hearth in her room, Sarah was reminded of the little servant she had seen before. In truth, she had looked for the girl earlier, but had been unable to spot any such person anywhere in the school. If not for the disagreement with her listeners, Sarah might have thought she had imagined her. Sarah understood that it would cause disruption if she barged into the kitchen to ask questions. She had only one bridge to rely on. Mariette, who is the little girl who makes the fires? Ah, Mademoiselle Sarah, you might well ask that poor little one. She has just recently been taken on as a scullery maid, though scullery is the least of it. She is sent to do every task that no one else wants. She blacks the boots and grates. She carries the coal scuttles up and down the stairs. She scrubs the floors and windows. I think she has not had enough to eat for years. She is older than her height would tell, and so timid. If I try to speak to her, her little eyes look to pop right out of her head. What is her name? I hear 
that called often enough. Becky, do this. Becky, do that. Everyone below stairs orders her about. Becky, if life were a story, Becky might be the ill-used heroine, and perhaps a fairy godmother might come to her rescue. You have a kind heart, mademoiselle. Your papa would be proud. Now stand up straight. Let me have a look at you. All right? Just as I thought, you are growing taller. I am? Sarah looked down at herself. I don't feel any different. How much have I changed since I've been here? You are at that age, after all. I will have to alter a few things. How tall will I grow before I see my papa again? Ah, oh, okay, we have very little belief at all, which is the, the, the... And I think belief is pretty much only from the diary. So let's, let's diary it up. We could use some grace. We'll do a dance and hope for grace. Patience. That's not what we wanted for once. Some faith. Not as much as we wanted. More faith. Faith, faith, faith. There we go. Belief. I keep calling it faith. I'm sorry. And double all figure, which did us no good. So that was actually a really bad week. I did badly. Sarah, Sarah, come and see. A number of students were drawn to the sound of Ermengarde's excitement. It was not often that a girl would call for such attention in her bedroom, particularly not quiet Miss St. John. What is it? Look, through the window there, that tree outside, can you see it? From the door to the room, Lavinia smirked. I should hope that she can see the tree outside, or else she needs eyeglasses. Hush! What do you want me to see, Ermengarde? There's a nest in the branches there, and there are eggs in it. Soon there will be baby birds. That's a darling, isn't it? Babies! Where? Must everyone come into my room? If you do not wish to attract attention in the future, do not bellow. Where are their babies? They're still inside the eggs, Lottie. There will be baby birds sometime in the future. Can baby birds see inside the eggs? I don't know. No, I think they're asleep. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a bird for a pet? You could feed it from your hand and it would sing to you. Baby birds are not wonderful. They're horrible, pink-skinned monsters with no eyes. Disgusting. Monsters! No, they aren't very pretty when they're born, but they change as they grow up. A lot of things do. Oh. Soon, little birds are covered with fuzz all over. Fuzzy chicks are adorable. But then they grow up and learn to fly. Even if I tried to keep a bird as a pet, it would probably fly away. There were people in India who kept parrots as pets, not even in cages. They can be trained to ride on someone's shoulder. My papa knew a man who gave his bride to be a parrot that he taught to recite love poetry to her. How romantic. I don't think a bird is a very romantic gift. What if she didn't want a pet? What if it pulled her hair? Lavinia reached out and tugged at a strand of Jessie's long red hair. Quack! My beloved is mine and I am hers. She feedeth among the lilies. Quack! <laughs> Stop that! <laughs> she swatted Lavinia's hand away. Are you going to take one of the eggs out of the nest to raise it? Oh no, that wouldn't be right. Little birds need their parents to survive. Jessie combed her hair back into place with her fingers, at least until the parents shove them out of the nests. Birds do that, don't they? Do they, Sarah Mama? Only when it's time for the young ones to learn to fly. After all, they can't stay eggs forever. That was a good scene. <laughs> um, oh, we don't have enough to visit Jessie, and I would very much like to visit Jessie. Um... I'm so torn. I love them all. I want to see them all. Um, except Lottie. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with her. She's fine. I just don't find her. She doesn't have a lot of interest for me. Um, 
all the video or oh my god or Mariette. It's so hard. Um Let's talk to Mariette again. Sarah lay on her bed, resting her cheek against the cool fabric of her pillow. The light of the mid-morning sun gleamed where it touched the surfaces in her room, gilding them with a fairy's brush. Perhaps if I lay still long enough, I will catch sight of a fairy coming to visit me. The next face she saw was not that of a visiting fairy. Do you try to catch your dreams, mademoiselle? I can leave you to sleep. I have tried in the past to go back into the same dream, but it never seems to work. Or if it does work, I can't remember it. You don't always remember in dreams. She shifted position, curling onto her side. I just don't feel like getting up today. I'm sorry. Let me see. She laid her dark hand against Sarah's forehead. You may be a little warm. I cannot tell. Does your throat hurt? No, I'm only tired. It is better to prevent than to heal. I will fetch you some porridge and salt water. She bustled out of the room, leaving Sarah to contemplate in silence. I do hope that I am not ill. It would be most unpleasant. I do not quite feel ill. As long as I think nice thoughts and don't feel, feel ill, then I am not ill, I think. Many young people would have difficulty remaining in their beds all day unless they were too ill to do otherwise. It was easier for Sarah, who enjoyed spinning fancies in her mind. I do not truly need to leave my bed in order to play out stories. In fact, with Mariette to bring me food, I might never need to leave these rooms at all. Like a princess bricked up in a tall tower, the prisoner of a wicked regent who means for her to be forgotten so that he can steal her kingdom in peace. She would be diligent at her studies, even within her tiny bedroom, so that one day when she was rescued or escaped, she would be ready to take back her rightful lands. This was a diverting fantasy, but it led Sarah to a more practical curiosity. There was, after all, someone close to her who did spend most of her days within these rooms. When Mariette returned with her tray of tonic, Sarah asked, Mariette, what do you do during the day while I am away? Since she is my maid, and not Miss Minchin's, she should not be made to do other work. But she is always here when I need her, so she must not go anywhere else. Oh, many things. She set the tray down. I look over your wardrobe and check for anything that might need mending. I might do a bit of embroidery on my own. And I do read your books. That is how you wished it, yes. I did not think to ask each time that I... Oh, no! I am glad that someone else reads them. I have many books, and some of them I only read once, and I worry that they might feel neglected. Sarah looked around the room at all of her pretty things, the gifts from her papa. They were all precious to her, but if you wish to, it is all right if you play with my toys while I'm in classes. I know I can trust you not to break them. But please make sure to leave Emily a little bit of private time when no one is watching her, so that she can sleep and relax. If Marriott wished to laugh, she was too polite to do so. Missy, mademoiselle. Now sit up, if you please, and have a bit of breakfast. If you are too weak, then I shall have to spoon the porridge into you myself. I'm well, I'm wonderfully well. She laughed, for it was true. She did feel better. <laughs> Sweet girl. Okay, I don't know what, which week, what week we're on. Are we on 13? Girls, gather around if you please. Today I have arranged a special outing for your edification. We will be attending the British Museum of National History. Natural, sorry. <laughs> Natural? Does that mean plants? Ugh, I hope not. There's nothing edifying about plants. It could be interesting to attend a museum of plants with people who know all about them and can tell their stories. You mean gardeners? Maybe we'll get to play in a garden. Quiet now, form up, let's go. Oh my. Ah! <laughs> oh, oh, look at Lavinia. She's got like her hands on her cheeks and or on her chin and her eyes have stars and she's just delighted. Of course, Lavinia would love a T-Rex. Of course she would. <laughs> 
<laughs> Meanwhile, Lottie is traumatized. Jessie looks frightened. And Irma Garst is smiling contentedly. She's happy. It's going to eat me! It can't eat you, Lottie. It's, d it's not a real dinosaur. It's a former dinosaur. It's dead! It's going to fall on me! I don't think it will fall. It's really rather interesting. It's an amazing spe... spe find. It's disturbing. It's a monster. It's marvelous. Jessie shivered and took Lottie's hand in hers. Come on, let's go find something to look at that isn't dead. Uh, I think that everything in the museum may be. Then we will look at the walls. <laughs> they are rather pretty walls. You'll look at the exhibits with me, won't you, Sarah? Yes, of course. Are you coming, Lavinia? No, I want to look at this one a while longer. Okay, if this game does not have an ending with Lavinia piloting like a mecha T-Rex around London eating people, I'm going to be disappointed. I'm just throwing that out here now. I'll catch up with the two of you in a few minutes. Two? You are here, aren't you? Right. Sarah wondered if this was the first time that Lavinia had ever preferred Ermengarde's company to Jessie's. I just... Can you not just see that, though? Lavinia piloting around London in a, a mecha T-Rex just consuming her enemies? <sighs> I'm just saying. I feel like it would be good. Oh, we have no grace and we have no vigor. And we could use some belief. Here we go. Okay, we got four grace. That's good. Ooh, six grace. That was that tops us out on grace. That was exactly what we needed. Belief. And patience, which we didn't need. Hey, we did all right. That was a good week for us. Sarah was woken from her sleep by the sound of knocking. I don't know how to pronounce that. Google will tell me. Huh. What does the phrase Casey Pasatil mean? And it says that the translation is like, what's going on or what's happening. It doesn't tell me how to pronounce it. Grr. Okay, we'll move on. Huh? Casey Pasiti? It's all right. I'll get the door. Lottie? Sarah, Mama. The younger girl clung to Sarah. I had a bad dream, and the monster was going to eat me. And then I woke up, and it was dark, and I thought I saw something. Bones. There were bones in my room. Monster bones. Shh, it's all right. Marriott, where are my slippers? The maid brought the fluffy white shoes for Sarah to slip her feet into. I will walk you back to your room and show you that it's safe. They went into the hallway together, two little girls in the dark. You're not mad. I woke you up. Well, I want to sleep, but you want to sleep too. And if you're too afraid, you can't sleep. But if I help you, then we both can. Lottie blinked her eyes a few times, but said nothing. There we are. See? No bones. Just a tree's shadow. Right. She paused at the door. Sarah, Mama? I didn't really think there were bones in my room. I mean, I thought it, but I didn't really believe it was true. I knew that it wasn't. I just wanted to feel better. I'm sorry. Sarah nodded slowly. Sometimes when you pretend things, even if you know behind the doors in your mind that they're not quite real, they still feel as if they were. It isn't wrong to believe in what you pretend. Lottie smiled. I will pretend that I'm going to have good dreams. 
That is a very nice thing to pretend. I believe I will too. And with that, she returned to her bed. Okay. Um. Oh, oh, we can go see Jesse again. Or we can see Lavinia. Or we can see Ermacar. Let's go see Jesse. I have a soft spot for redheads. And I'm not going to apologize for it. <laughs> Sarah, I was wondering. What do you do when you are at tea with Miss Minchin and those people? Does she have you recite a party piece or dance or pose? Are there men present? Not commonly, and only if their wives are in attendance. I do not think so many men would care for tea with a schoolmistress. I have never been asked to dance or recite. Sometimes she asks me about my lessons and if I like the other classes and the other pupils, which I always say that I do. Sometimes they ask me about books that I have read, which I don't mind, and then Miss Minchin says how clever I am, which makes me uncomfortable. Often, Miss Minchin wishes me to converse in French with a lady. They are not usually French women themselves, but they see the language as a charming accomplishment. All of a sudden, Jessie's tone sharpened. Do they actually converse with you as a person, or only as Miss Minchin's pretty toy? Do they ever call on you instead of Miss Minchin? Do you ever see them again? Sarah blinked rapidly. I don't understand. Doesn't it make you angry, being used like a trinket for Miss Minchin to display? There does not seem to be any reason for me to be angry. Having tea with visitors is not such a difficult thing. It is like a kind of performance with, with attention instead of applause. A performance. I never thought that tea and books and French could be like being on the stage. Jessie spun in place, letting her skirt catch the air, then sank in a formal curtsy. It was a beautiful position, with her back perfectly straight, and the fabric of her dress spread neatly around her. Oui, oui, merci, madame, please pour again. <laughs> Not quite like that. Jessie straightened patting her skirts down to ensure that every ruffle was in place. Will you speak French to me, Sarah? I, I hardly know what to say when you ask it like that. Say something pleasant. Say that it is a beautiful day, or that your breakfast was delicious, or that I am clever and charming. <laughs> I ship them so hard. <laughs> oh, here we go. Vous êtes une jeune fille charmante, mais je ne vous comprends pas toujours. Jessie smiled, although Sarah was not sure if she had understood the entire phrase. The language sounds so much lovelier from your lips than from those of Monsieur Dufar. It always sounds beautiful to me. It reminds me of my mother. Oh, did you? Jessie, where are you? Oh, I have to go. I'll visit you later, all right? And she hurried off to answer her best friend's summons. Here we go, week 15. <laughs> week 15, you guys. Mademoiselle, hold out your arms like so, if you please. Sarah extended her arms, letting them drift into ballet's second position. Now over your head, so I can see the fabric stretch. Mariette was making the final adjustments to Sarah's new pink dancing frock after pointing out that Sarah's change in height meant her old ones no longer fit just so. Ha, huh, a touch just there. Take it off again if you please, and I'll have it done before your next lesson. Sarah wriggled free of the soft fabric and handed it over. It's such a beautiful color, and the skirt is so light. Dancing in that, I shall feel like a pink butterfly floating on the breeze, or a fairy princess with wings like rose petals. Roses, that is what it needs. A wreath of roses for your head. I will find some buds at the florist. The mental picture of herself decked out in a pink dancing frock with a crown of flowers was so delightful that Sarah laughed out loud. Sometimes, oh! Sometimes life is so beautiful. I wonder if I have pretended it into being. Mademoiselle does have a very good imagination. No, it is the magic. 
The magic shapes our lives. It makes everything wonderful. Sarah's heart was lighter than a feather. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to save here. We're on week 15. Week 15. I'm going to save here and cut the video cuz it's been about an hour. Um I still have no concept of how long this game is. If I uh, know some of you have already played it through, if if you could tell me how many weeks there are before the game ends, I would be very grateful cuz it would be nice to know are we halfway there? Are we are we, you know, a third of the way there? It's not that I'm in a hurry to finish. I just like knowing. Um but I'm going to cut this and upload it. Um, once again, this has been A Little Lily Princess by Hanako Games. If you're enjoying this and if you can afford it, I totally recommend picking up the game itself. Um, I, I know I've been reading in, 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 there's been a lot of articles, not about Hanako, just about Let's Play in general, that, um, you know, sometimes there's a concern about do Let's Plays cause lost sales, um, because people can just go watch the game. Um, and I mean, I think that, you know, it's a complicated question. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. There's Let's Plays I watch of games that I literally don't have the physical ability to play. I'm not good at, like, first-person shooters and stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, uh, I thought I'd throw that out there because I know Hanako is kind of a very small sort of independent company. They're really nice. They've always been good to me. Um, and they have a really great uh, Let's Play policy. They let us monetize, monetize the videos and they don't, um, you know, put up copyright complaints against us. It's very kind of them. Um, some of the bigger game companies uh, do. <laughs> um, so, so, so anyway, all that to say, if you're enjoying this game and if you want to support them, uh, there's a link to their website in the video description, and I'm sure they would absolutely love um, to have your business. Um, if you like me <laughs> and want to support me, uh, there's a subscription button if you're not already subscribed. Um, I'm always grateful for the little bit of ad revenue that trickles in from YouTube that helps me afford the games. Um, so there we go. I'm not going to usually do that kind of disclaimer, but I was feeling mushy today, so I thought I'd throw it out. Um, <laughs> and thank you just for watching these. I'm, I'm always just amazed when people sit through an hour or more of me nattering on about everything that crosses my mind and I appreciate it. Um, stay tuned for the next video. You guys have a wonderful day. Uh, my name is Anna Mordal and I'll see you hopefully very soon. Bye bye.